Hey everyone, so this is going to be your introduction to Rhino. Um, unfortunately, our class recording didn't work for the second half of our class, so I'm going to reintroduce this to you. For those who were in class, this will be kind of um, a review, and for those who are asynchronous, this will be a new introduction for you. When you first open up Rhino, it's gonna look something like this. You have these uh, four viewports, and you have a palette over here that says layers, has a whole bunch of icons, and you also see a whole bunch of menus up here as well as lots and lots of icons along the top and the side. You also have an upper menu up here. If you're on a Mac, it's gonna look a little bit different and maybe I'll get Sammy to do a little interface demo in Mac so that you can see what that looks like. One thing to note about Rhino is that all of these panels and menus and icons, they look really overwhelming, but to begin working in Rhino, you really don't need to know that many commands. Um, the basic way that we access commands is either by typing them in via the command line or by selecting them on one of these menus or by searching for them in these menus up here. So oftentimes there's uh, more than one way to access a command. Um, there's a shortcut, which is also called an alias. Um, there is a button and then there is a menu command uh, that you can choose from like a flyout up here. So a lot of this is replicated information and that just is to make sure that you can always find what you're looking for. But on first glance, it does look pretty overwhelming. You don't really need to know what all of these sub menus are for. Um, I'm gonna just introduce you to some of the basic ones. So what are viewports? Viewports are ways of looking down and around at objects in space. So when we're drawing or modeling in Rhino, we use the viewports to understand what our models and drawings look like from different perspectives. In top view, this is the plan view. So it's an orthogonal mode of projection. We're looking down at whatever is in the view plane. In perspective, this is where we can orbit around and take a look at space. And then we have front and right hand um, elevational style viewports. And just so that you can understand what this looks like with a model in it, I'm gonna show you this example. This is uh, the temporary park at False Creek by PWL. I was helping them with their ASLA submission. And this is a plan view of the model. This is a perspective view of the model. And then you can see we have a front and a right hand view of the model. So this is all in elevation. When we look at models and line work in Rhino, it comes in what are called display modes. So if we use this little drop down menu, you can see there's these options here, wireframe, shaded, rendered, ghosted, x-ray, etc. Those are just different ways of looking at the same thing. So if I move to a shaded display mode, it's going to basically shade in all of the surfaces and poly surfaces within the model so that I can see them as distinct from one another. And those will usually take on the color of the material or the, the layer color that has been assigned within this palette here. So you can see all of the concrete, I've assigned this purple color, um, some of the ground asphalt colors, of which there are many, because this is all made up of a lot of painted asphalt, have different colors assigned to them over here. And this just helps us differentiate materials and objects in space. So I can also change the display mode here. Um, I'll change this one to shaded as well. And in shaded view, we aren't able to see through the surfaces. So if this is an object, it's a kind of a solid surface, you can't see through to it. If we change that to um, ghosted, we will be able to see through the objects to other objects below. As you can see here, there's some line work underneath this that's visible if we have it on ghosted, but it's not visible when we have it on shaded. So you can kind of just take a look at these different um, display modes, and I usually work on shaded or ghosted. We use the front and right elevation views to um, check, our, check our objects in these views, but usually what we're working in is top view and perspective view. You can just change your viewport or make it active by clicking within the viewport itself. You can see that the title gets highlighted when you change your viewport. 
And if you want to maximize a viewport, you can just double click on the name and that way you'll always be working in this plan view and it'll kind of take precedence over the screen. If you want to return to the other viewports, you can just double click on that title again and you can just then go into a perspective view or another view if you want. How we uh, move around in Rhino is pretty simple. We use the um, right mouse button to orbit around and um, we use the left mouse button to select. So uh, if you want to pan, you would use this little hand and that could pan around for you. Um, you could also press P for pan. As soon as you type in anything, it's gonna automatically get written in the command line. And if you just leave a letter or two up on the screen, it's gonna give you a whole list of possible commands. So even if you don't really know what you're looking for, but you kind of know what action you want to do, if you just start typing in, it's very likely that Rhino has a command that matches what you want to do. So if I wanna draw a line, for example, I can start drawing LI and I can see all of the different uh, commands that I can do with that. So here's line right here. Um, so there's, it's a good way to sort of um, get started in Rhino is just to start typing in things that you think that you would want to do and see if the command corresponds. But we're also going to do some, some practice with drafting here so that you can get used to the sort of basic commands. Okay, so that's, uh, that's the viewports and that's kind of how you move around in Rhino. Um, to select objects in Rhino, we use the left mouse button and we can just click and drag these windows around. You'll notice that there's different ways to select objects depending on which way you drag your window. So if you drag a window from the upper left down to the lower right, the window will select only entire objects that are completely contained within that window. So you see, I don't get this ground plane, but I do get all of these objects because they were completely contained within the window. If I drag from the lower right up to the upper left, the um, selection will grab everything that crosses that window. So everything that this window touches is going to be selected. So this stuff over here is not selected because the window didn't extend that far, um, but everything here was selected even though it wasn't completely contained within the window. So those are different ways of selecting objects in Rhino. We can also move things around fairly easily. So if we select everything, you see this like kind of, um, orientation device comes up with these arrows and this curve um, along with some handles over here. This is known as the gumball. I'm just gonna move over into perspective view and we'll take a look at what the gumball can do. So the gumball is like um, a mini axis. We can move things um, by dragging on the arrows. So if I want to move it um, in the Y direction or in the X direction, I can move the model around just by clicking those arrows. If I want to use it, if I want to move it in the Z direction, I can use the blue arrow to go up and down. So the, the gumball can be a really easy way of shifting things around um, in Rhino. I'm just gonna undo my action so that I put my model back where it was. Okay, so uh, you can turn the gumball on and off just by clicking it here in this bottom navigational menu. There's a whole bunch of different commands here. We're gonna go through them as we work, but for now you can just know that turning on the gumball is as easy as just clicking this on and off. Now each individual object can also be used, um, can also be moved with the gumball. So if I just select just this one surface here, you see it has its own gumball. Whereas if I select multiple objects, all of those, then the gumball shows up kind of in the center of wherever those are and it will only move the objects that are selected. If, uh, if you find this easy to work with, then by all means use it. If you find that a little bit strange and don't know what to do with it, then feel free to turn it off as well if, if, you, um, if you don't wanna use it. There's other ways to move objects. Of course, you can select everything and just type in move or M if you have your Rhino aliases loaded. M will start the move command, and then you can select a point and move the um, group of objects that you've selected anywhere on the canvas or in the viewport. 
Um, the problem with this is that you have to use what are called orthographic constraints to be sure that you're moving it to the right place. So if I wanted to move this to the origin, which is zero, zero, I could just type in zero comma zero and press enter. And Rhino would move this entire model to the origin here. That means it's at um, the base of the X, Y, and Z axis. So you can type in a specific location on your coordinates if you want to move the model there. Or if you want to move the model a certain distance, you can do M for move, grab a point, and uh, for example, we can move it along this Y axis by a certain number of meters. Maybe I want to move it 50 meters on the Y axis over here. I would just click to end the command and everything moves in that direction. So moving is fairly straightforward um, and, and pretty easy to do. Let's go back to our regular Rhino window over here and I'm gonna show you how to change the units. So down here at the bottom of the screen, you can see that Rhino tells us what units we're working in. And by default, when you open Rhino, I think it just goes to millimeters or at least that's how mine goes. So it's super easy to change the units. All you have to do is write in units anywhere. You can just start typing and it will automatically put it into the command line. I'll hit enter and it will bring up this document properties that's on this units. So you can change your units here to pretty much anything that's within this dialog box. So if you wanna change it to meters because your plan is in meters, then that's what you can do here. I would change then your display position down to two decimal points. We probably don't need to get much more detailed than that as you're drafting at 1 to 50. Um, so I'm gonna hit okay. In this layers palette over here, um, I'll just talk about this because this is what you're probably gonna be referencing the most often. Um, we have a space to keep layers organized in the drawing. We have a place to create new layers and to filter and organize layers. Um, the other menu item that's kind of important to understand here are the properties. So this colored wheel brings up your object properties. Once you have objects and lines in your drawing, you can select them and Rhino will bring up information about them. It will, right now, because there's nothing selected, it just tells you, you know, what viewport you're in, how big that is, um, what type of projection you're in, which is parallel projection, um, and other information about the camera, etc. But if we go to our model over here, if I select this surface and I go to properties, it's going to tell me what type of object it is, a trimmed surface. It's going to tell me the layer that it's on, its color, the line type, etc. So there's a whole bunch of information that we can see that's relevant to this drawing. Um, if I select this, it's then going to tell me what type of object it is, what layer it's on, etc. So the commands that we use the most often in Rhino are drafting commands and modeling commands. And at the start, since all we really need to do is draft a plan, I'm gonna show you how to drag in a um, drawing into Rhino and then scale it and begin drawing with lines over top of it. So I have uh, my scanned um, plan that I used as a demonstration and I will just open that up. So I have it here and I'm just gonna drag it right into this window. And Rhino's gonna ask me what should I do with this dragged in file? And I'm gonna say, bring it in as a picture. So um, then I have to choose a point to start the drawing at. I'm just gonna start at zero, zero. And then I can resize the image to anything I want. It doesn't really matter how big it is right now because we're gonna scale it properly soon. So I'm just gonna click there. And now I have a background image um, in my drawing. So I can kind of just draw over top of this with lines. Let's keep our layers organized. Let's go over here to layers and make a new one. And I'm just gonna call this a uh, reference image like that. And with that object selected, either by drawing a window around it, by clicking on it, or by drawing another selecting window from the lower part, I can then right click on this layer and go change object layer. So now this is going to be on this layer and I can turn it on and off. I can lock it and I can uh, keep it organized. With this layer selected, I'm gonna to go to my properties and um, I think I would like to make this a little bit transparent so that I can see the lines that I'm drawing on top of it. So I'm just going to do some manipulation to this. I'm gonna to go to 
um, the material and it tells me what the material is, which is right now my drawing. And I'm going to just go down here to transparency and change this to 50%. And now you see the drawing has faded back a bit so we can kind of see what we're doing as we draw. Then I'm just gonna to go to my layers palette and I'm gonna lock it so that I don't accidentally move it around while I'm drafting on top of it. Then I'm gonna make a new layer and I'm gonna call this one uh, line work. So I will just hit this uh, box here. Um, this stands for the current layer. You can't really see it's cut off on the side here, but if you expand this, you can see this is the current layer. So you can just change it by clicking on this current layer on whatever layer you wanna work on. So before we start working, we actually wanna scale this image so that it's at the right scale. When we're working in Rhino, we're working in real units. We're working at one to one. So what we have on our drawing should be the right units in real life. So if this planter is meant to be three meters, then I need to make sure that the distance in Rhino is also three meters. So I can measure something by using the distance command. I'll type in DI, that's the shortcut. And I'll check my distance. So I'm gonna just check from this corner and I'm pressing shift to constrain my line. I'm gonna take it to this corner and it says it's 3.73 meters but I want this to be exactly three meters because that's how big it is in real life. So the first thing I'll do is draw a reference line. I'm gonna draw a line using the L command, just L, enter, and I'm gonna start that line at this corner. Now it's gonna be a little bit difficult to do this super precisely because all of your lines have a width and that's gonna um, make it a little bit tough to scale this super properly. But the next thing I'll do is just hit shift to constrain this to the X axis. And I'm gonna also type in, um, I'm gonna actually just like end the line at this corner here. So now I just have like a reference line. So now I'm going to select both the line and the image and I'm gonna use the scale command. I will write SC for scale, enter. Select a base point, I'm gonna start at the beginning of this line, the end point. If you don't have um, a snap to the endpoint, check down here and make sure that end is turned on. So I'm gonna select my endpoint and it's gonna ask for the first reference. The first reference is the end of the line. Now, what size do I want it? It's asking me for a second reference point. I'm gonna type in three. That's how long I want that line to be. So I'm gonna go three, enter. And now if I measure that line again using the distance command, and measure from end to end, it's exactly three meters. So I can get rid of my reference line. Oops, don't get rid of your background image. Just select the line and delete it. And now we have um, a properly scaled plan. I'm just gonna move this down to zero, zero again, just to keep it at the origin. And now I'm gonna lock it. So now I can go ahead and begin drafting over top of this. And because I have um, some regularized objects, I can use a few different tools to begin drafting this out. For these objects here, which are irregular polygons, I can use the polyline command. That's over here in this toolbar. It can also be accessed by writing PL for polyline. That's going to um, bring up the polyline command. I'm just gonna press escape to get out of it. Over here we have squares. So I can use the rectangle command. You see it over here. Um, and there's a bunch of different ways of drawing a rectangle. You can draw it from corner to corner, from the center to the corner, or using three points. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. So let's start by drawing a polyline around these irregular polygons. So I'm gonna write in PL to get to my polyline, press enter, and then I'm just going to click in the corner. And I'm going to keep clicking around these uh, edges until I have my shape. All right, I have all my polygons here. Disregarding this one for now. Um, Let's move on to these square planters. So I'm going to use the rectangle from corner to corner. So I'm just gonna click on this. 
um, if you want to type it in, I'm just gonna press escape to get out of the command. You can go REC, which stands for rectangle. And here again, you have this contextual submenu that comes up. So you can choose three points, vertical, center, round, curve, rounded, etc. When you just type in REC for rectangle, it's gonna automatically default to corner to corner. So I'm gonna um, click there. And it's gonna say other corner or length. Since I want this to be very precise, I don't just wanna click in the edge of the corner where I think it's gonna be. I'm going to use the measurements that I know. So this is three meters, I'm gonna write three. And it's gonna ask for the width and the width is also three. So enter. And you see it's drawn the rectangle up here. So I can just use the gumball to drag this down into place like that or I can move it using the move command, M for move, enter, and using um, shift to constrain my direction, I can just drag it down. So it looks like my drafting was a little off here, um, either that or I had some distortion in my image, but I'm just gonna re-measure uh, this. This is three meters exactly, so I guess that I just, didn't draw these lines super parallel while I was drafting. Um, so this is the kind of thing you're gonna confront as you translate your analog drawing to a digital drawing. The digital drawing is gonna be much more precise. Um, there is no accounting for the width of the lines or um, the fact that your parallel ruler wasn't super parallel. This is going to allow you to do things really, really precisely. So, there's a few ways we could continue to uh, draft these rectangles out. We could just draw each individual one, but I also know the distance between these um, planters is going to be uniform around the entire site. So if I remember correctly, the distance between this point and this point was five and a half meters. So what I'm gonna do is draw um, a line. I'm gonna draw the line using the L command and I'm gonna start it here at this point. I'll hold down shift and I'm just gonna um, uh, end it over here around this corner point. Before I uh, begin copying this planter over, I'm going to offset it. I wanna get that inside edge that I have here. And if I measure using the distance command what this is supposed to be, it looks like it's about 0.25 there. I'm just gonna measure this one and see how much it is. Looks like it's about 0.2. I think that this is meant to be about 0.2, which would be around eight inches. So I'm going to use the offset command and go O for offset. And here you can choose the distance. I'm gonna hit distance and it's automatically set to one. I'm just gonna put in 0.2, enter. Now you can see if you move your mouse inside or outside, that the rectangle is being offset by 0.2. So I'm just gonna hit on the inside and now I have um, an inner rectangle that reflects the sort of curb edge of this planter and it is all in the right place. So I am now going to um, move these and duplicate them across the site in uh, an organized way. So. I'm going to use a command called linear array. How we write it in is array, and then you can see a whole bunch of options comes up. I'm just gonna go down to linear. It's gonna ask me how many objects I want. This is the amount of total objects. So one, two, three, four. I want four objects. So I'm gonna write four. And then it's gonna ask me for the first reference point. I'm gonna start at the corner here. Now you see there's four objects and it's going to ask me for the next reference point. What I would like to do is just write in the total distance between this point and this point. If I remember correctly, the total should be eight meters. So I'm just going to hit eight and go enter. And then I'm going to uh, just click on the page. And now you can see all of these um, planters have been deployed across the page again. I didn't draft this super precisely, apparently. I thought I did, but um, I guess I didn't. So that's what happened. Now I'm gonna do the same thing, but going in the vertical direction. So first I'm gonna draw a line, just as a reference, and I'm gonna take it from the end point of this rectangle. 
and I'm going to hit shift to constrain this down. And I'm going to get to the end of this uh, rectangle here. Um, okay, so now I'm going to select those two squares representing my planter, and I'm going to use array linear. I want three objects in total, and my first reference point is the corner here. My next reference point is going to be eight meters uh, below that. So I'll just hit eight, enter, and then I'm just going to make sure I click on my reference line so that I know it's going vertical. So to me, what looks like happened is um, this plan was a little bit crooked when I brought it in. So if I wanted to just reorient it and, and make it align a little bit better with what I know I have drafted, I can rotate it. So I'm going to use the RO command that stands for rotate. I'm going to choose a first point for my rotation. And because this um, point here is really well aligned with the draft, I'm going to use this as my, my rotation point. So I will select there. My first angle of reference is, um, I'm going to make it this point here, which is the kind of cross point at the end of this draft. And then my reference point is going to be the corner of the, the square that I drafted and arrayed, so like that. And I'm just gonna see if that um, aligned my work a little bit better. All right, so um, this side is just a mess. Um, it's, it's just a result of having hand drafted and not really having the proper tools with which to do that. Um, but we're fixing that now as we go through and do this digitally. So now I know that my planters are properly spaced according to how they are in real life. Um, if I want to measure between them, I can um, just grab a point there and grab a point here and check it's five meters between them. So um, everything is correct according to what I know the site is supposed to represent. Um, and I can keep using commands to um, build out the rest of my plan. So if I wanna draw these edges, I would use the polyline command. If I want to um, draw in these edges, I could draw a line using polyline here. Enter and then select that. And I could offset that into the inner surface. So I'm gonna use O for offset and I can change my distance here. Um, I think that these are about half a meter. I'm just gonna check and see. Yep, looks like they're about half a meter. So now I've offset that line. I don't need this reference line anymore so I can just delete it. And there's another command that you're going to need to know. These are um, pretty basic drafting commands. You see how when we offset this line, it crossed over this edge here, but it doesn't quite extend to the right edge here. There are two commands we can use to fix this. One is called trim and one is called extend. So extend is just EX, enter. We can select our, our boundary objects, which are this line here and press enter and then select the curve to extend. So Rhino is great, it always tells you exactly what to do in the command line. So now I'm gonna click on this line and you see it just automatically extends right to that boundary. I can hit enter to end the command. And now over here, I'm gonna use the trim command, TR for trim. Select the cutting object. So the thing I want to use to cut this line is this line. So I'm gonna use this as my cutting object and press enter. And then I select the object to trim, which is this line enter and now you see it's all gone so the line has been trimmed and press enter to finish the command so the commands that are super helpful for drafting are lines polylines rectangles offset trim extend those are pretty much the basics that's really great and fine if you have a super rectilinear plan, but I know a lot of you have curvilinear plans. So I'm going to show you how you can draw lines that are curvilinear. 
Let's say I'm going to um, draw the edge around this tree. Now, I wouldn't recommend actually doing this. Um, I would instead use a symbol or some other type of asset later to represent this tree. But let's just use this as a practice area to understand how we can draw curvilinear. I'm gonna use this control point curve. And if I just click down on the flyout menu here, there are a few options. There's control point curve and there's um, interpolate points. If you choose this one, basically you're going to set points on the page and Rhino is going to interpret the curve in between those points. But if you use interpolate points, um, the line is going to go directly through the points that you put on the page. So let me just show you the difference. If we use control point curve, and let's say I want to trace out this uh, edge here, as you can see, it's not very accurate. It's uh, it's an approximation of what's happening. And you can see what happens as the curve gets drawn. It's going in between the points. So it's kind of like a line of best fit in between the points. So I'm just hit, gonna hit escape to cancel that command. Now, if we open this flyout again and we use the interpolate points command, now when we draw our curve, Rhino is going to put the line right in between all of those points. So now the line is going right between the points and I can get really, really accurate depending on how close I put those points together. So if you have a curvilinear site, I would highly recommend using this command to draw your lines um, rather than trying to um, do it the other way with the other type of curve. So let's say I'm done um, and I want to close this off. I just hit the end point here, and now I have a closed curve here. So you can use that command to draw curved edges and curved surfaces. Um, let's just look at a few other commands. So we have these tree trunks. These are definitely circles. Um, we have a circle command, of course, it's right here. And if you want to draw a circle, um, there's also a few ways to do that, just like the rectangle. You can do a two-point circle, a three-point circle, a related to the tangent around curves, et cetera. There's lots of different ways, but the default is just gonna be a center point and a diameter. So if I want to select a center point here, I could just do that. And now the next point is gonna be the diameter. So I'm just going to set it approximately there. But what if I want it to be super accurate, like highly accurate right within the very center of this box? We can use a reference line to do that. I'm gonna use L to draw a line. And making sure that down here, I have the midpoint snaps um, selected, I'm going to draw a line at the midpoint. So if I hover my mouse over this line, it's eventually gonna get to the midpoint snap. And I'm just going to draw a line that connects these midpoints. Now I'm going to select my circle. And down here, I'm gonna make sure I have center checked off. So I'm going to hit move, M for move. And as I hover over my circle, um, it's going to eventually snap to the center of the circle. So just hover your mouse over the edge and eventually you'll see it goes to the center of the circle. So I'm gonna select that. Now I'm in the center and I'm gonna find the midpoint on this curve. That's right here. Now I know that my circle is perfectly oriented in the exact center of this box. So I can select my reference line here and delete it and um, press escape to um, deselect my object here. And now if I want to copy this, um, I can use the copy command. Let's use CO for copy. It's gonna ask you a point to copy from and I'm gonna copy it from this corner and I'm just gonna copy it over here. And I'm gonna keep copying it to these corners and down to these corners. And now I have all of the tree trunks um, for my planters. They're located right in the middle of my planters. You can do that with the tree canopy as well, of course. You can just draw a bigger circle to represent the tree canopy, or if you wanna get really detailed, you could draw it in yourself. There's also a way to drag other assets in and use them in, in um, Rhino. Um, it's up to you how you want to draw your trees. There are a few other drafting commands that you can check out. Um, if you have ellipses in your plan, 
or arcs in your plan, you can take a look at some of these flyouts. And if you just hover over the command, it will tell you exactly how to build that thing. So if I hover over here, it says center start angle. So that means if I want to draw an arc, I'm going to choose a center point, a starting point, and an ending point. If you want to um, have some more control over the angles and not just have it free in space, you can go down here to your um, orthos, right click, and go set ortho angle. And now I'm going to change it to 15 degrees like that. And now my line is going to snap to 15 degrees if I have my ortho mode on. So now I can, you can see um, at 90, 75, 60, 45, 30, 15, 0, that my um, angle is snapping automatically to those points as I move. If I don't want it to snap anymore, I can just turn off my ortho mode and now I'm free to move my angle anywhere I want. You can also always use shift to constrain in the X or Y direction. Um, as I have shift on, it automatically sets it to whatever ortho angle I have. So it's hitting those 15 degree points again as I press shift. So if you wanna temporarily enable your ortho mode, you can just hit shift and that's gonna do that. So take a look at some of these upper um, commands here. These are really the basic drafting tools. Um, and then the rest of the tools here, I'm just gonna go briefly through them. We have some different ways to draw surfaces. We have a way to fillet surfaces so that they are two surfaces are connected by a curved surface. We can make extrusions that are rectangular. We can make, um, we can join different poly surfaces together using different ways of um, combining things. We can project our curves down to a surface, even if that surface is curved. We can create meshes. We can join uh, different lines together and we can explode different lines or surfaces as well. Here's that trim command. So if you were ever looking for it in the menu, instead of writing TR for trim, you can also find it here. And there's another useful command called split that's gonna come in handy later. Um, we have grouping of objects, ungrouping, and you can just kind of hover over and see what other things are on this menu. But basically all the, all the basic commands are here, scaling, copying, moving, etc. So um, everything that you need to know is in this kind of standard menu. Um, you don't really have to move any of, or go to any of these other menus really at this stage. Hopefully that's enough to get you started with the drafting in Rhino. And in the next tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to export your line work and bring it into Illustrator.